Hey, hey, we are in Douglas, Arizona. We are literally at the border, gang. And we are coming up to the cemetery here. It's called Calvary. And it looks pretty darn nice. Look at those trees. I sure didn't expect that for a, call it a desert cemetery. In fact, as I look in, and I'm just pulling in, you know, I didn't scout this out, doing this together. It looks pretty lush and green. And we're in. Let's go. Well, I was definitely fooled coming in here because when you come in the front, it's beautiful lush green. And once you get in, it's the desert. Although it's a very beautiful cemetery and we're definitely gonna check it out. But yeah, a little bit on Douglas, very interesting town with some interesting history. I mean, if we go back to 1776, that's when the Spanish came. A few miles away from here, they built a presidio and then four years later, they were like, this place stinks, let's get out of here. <laughs> and they were gone. But years later, this would be established as a very industrious place. It was a smelting town. Smelting is basically where you're applying heat to the, to the ore to get the metal out. In this case, copper, it'd be uh, all the way, pretty much about 30 miles to the west of here, the town of Bisbee, which is a great town to visit. They would bring the copper here, and this is where they, the smelters would work. So this town grew and it grew and, and it was pretty strong for a long time, I think until the 80s. But it has some interesting other notes. One that are, well, one, a couple of infamous things. One, this is the place that, uh, I think it was 1916, Pancho Villa actually was gonna ride up and route this town, sack this town. It didn't happen. But in more modern times, this was a famous place where there was a long underground tunnel where they would smuggle drugs in. But let's go back to the late 1800s. Let's talk about a story about a woman that ended up here in the 1900s who was pretty infamous in her own right, but it would be her mother, as we all probably know, Any many of you who know Western history, very infamous, the very infamous Bell Star. Now, this is the daughter of Bell Star, Rosie Lee, and she would pick up the, the infamous last name for notoriety. But let's, let's take a walk. Let's talk about her. Let's walk to her grave because, like I said, this is where she ended up. She ended up in this town of Douglas. Why? Well, we're going to talk about it. But generally, it is because she got kicked out of where she was. She was, I guess... As we start the story, or before we start the story, she was just basically a live wire. And that's probably why she ended up here. This place was booming at the time too. Now, very interesting cemetery and very common here in Arizona. Now, this is a good example of a desert, a desert cemetery. So let's take a look at some of these graves as we we wander along here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the story. So Rosie Lee Reed, that was her name when she was born. And as I mentioned, it was Belle Starr, the mother, the reputed bandit queen, as we know of the American Old West. Now, it is said that Belle Starr, we'll talk a little bit about Belle Starr before we get into it, for those of you who don't know. She had interactions with the James Younger gang. You know, and that gets into the whole Jesse James history. And it is said that she was involved with other outlaws. Now, Bell Starr, she was unceremoniously killed back in 1889. I mean, her daughter here, that we're going to visit her grave. Rosie was only 21 when she was murdered. They say it happened on February 3rd, 1889, two days before her 41st birthday. She was ambushed, shot off her horse, the result of a, a shotgun wound in the back and the neck. Pretty close range stuff. And 
still today nobody really knows who's responsible, but many think it was her son Edwin that did it, or a guy named Jim July, her dead husband's adopted Cherokee brother. It was her current husband. She had married him actually by law to keep her husband, to keep her land in Indian Territory. Now, Rosie had heard the shots and she came running and they say that Belle died in her arms. So not a good start. Very sad end for Belle Starr. So Rosie, yeah, she was born Rosie Lee Reed. She was born in Rich Hill, Missouri. September of 1868, her mom, Bell Star, right, we talked about. Bell Star said that she was, that is Rosie, the daughter of Cole Younger. Now there's no records of that and don't think that's true. Cole Younger denied it. It was probably hogwash. It was James Jim Reed who was also an outlaw that was her father. He was an ex-Quantrill raider. We've been to Lawrence, Kansas, right? Quantrill, you guys remember? That they had rekindled their relationship, Bell and James, when they were, I mean, they, they grew up together and they were in Texas when they rekindled and they got married there. And it didn't take long before old Jim got tired of farming. He was supposed to go the straight and narrow. And he's like, heck with this. And he ended up connecting with a famous guy, infamous guy named Tom Starr. He was a Cherokee. He had a gang. And they were robbing and rustling, bootlegging in Indian Territory. And Indian Territory was all that... Remember we talked about Oklahoma and all that area down there was wild and free from the law. Not a place to get caught, let me tell you, if you're not an outlaw. So in August of 1874, he was actually gunned down in Texas, Paris, Texas, by a lawman. So 26-year-old Bell was a widow and she ended up marrying that Cherokee named Sam Starr. So now Mother Bell ended up marrying him and they would go and settle on the Canadian River in Indian Territory at a place, and this is verified, called Younger's Bend. Now, if you check out my friend Reddy, Ready for History, he did a really good episode at Bell's Grave at Younger's Bend in the woods there. Really great episode. I'll, I'll put the link below. You got to check that out. Some really interesting graves here. I got to tell you. Let's walk this way. This looks amazing. So it is said that in April of 1887, Rosie had, to her mom's chagrin, an illegitimate daughter, and I think this is verified, named Flossie, because Flossie would write a book later. And her mother, Belle, really didn't like that. So she sent her away to Arkansas to live with relatives, to have the child. I mean, in those days, a very embarrassing thing, right? The next interesting thing that happened in Rosie's life happened in 1888. And this gets back to her brother, Edwin, James Edwin, they called him Eddie. And he was found in possession of some stolen property. And it was tough days back then. He, had, he got shot by his accomplice. So that summer, Rosie was trying to help him, help care for him, get him to recover. He had to go to trial, so she helped him with that too. Unfortunately, he was found guilty, sent to prison. So about that time, that's when Rosie married a man named Will Harrison. Now their marriage did not work out, and two years later they got divorced. Of course by this time, Mom had been getting more and more famous in the dime novels at his bell, and of course once she was killed, she became super famous, and that is around the time that Rosie said, you know what, I'm going gonna, 
I'm going to take up this name and I'm going to go by Pearl. Pearl Star. So what did she do? Well, she's single. She said, I'm going to be a prostitute. I can make some good money. So she was in Van Buren, Arkansas. And her excuse was, well, I've got to do this. I've got to make this money to get my brother out of prison. And I'm sure it's partially true. I mean, so she ended up putting the defense team together for Edwin, 1893. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. Anyway, down the line, she next moved to Fort Smith, Arkansas, and I think this is where she would become most infamous. And she, of course, set herself up with a bordello on the row, they would call it, which is Fort Smith's waterfront street of gambling halls. Great picture. So yeah, she had this parlor as we'll call it and she had the piano player and all the whiskey and reputed to have all the beautiful girls west of the Mississippi and she was making a lot of money now Pearl <laughs> this now this is we're gonna start talking about Pearl here in a little bit if not now she was like I said, a live wire. Well, she was mean. She was like, she was strong. She was, she was a butt kicker and she had a temper. And she would like, she would yell and somebody got in her way or somebody was doing something in there. I guess you had to be in those days. She would like take them out herself. She was like a bouncer. She was her own bouncer, I guess you could say. <laughs> it's a beautiful statue here. Look at that. Violet, born 1881. She died in 1927. Isn't that beautiful? This is a great place to walk, guys, I gotta tell you. Let's go this way. Look at those statues over there. Let's go check those out. So yeah, like I said, she was mean. She acted as her own bouncer, a cat bouncer, a cat house bouncer, if you will. She would beat up on men and women alike. So she's making more and more money. And what does she do? She's smart. She starts investing in more saloons and property. Now she would have another illegitimate daughter, 1894, her name was Ruth. And then she would get married to a man named Arthur Erbach, 1897. And she'd have a son with him the next year in 1898. And I gotta read you this little clipping, but let's just first look at these two graves. This is Arturo Morales. He passed 1978. And it's interesting, over his grave, is the Blessed Mother. He was born 1893. And then Louisa, his wife, has, has the Christ, has the Savior, uh, 1918 to 1994. So she lived, she lived a lot longer. So let me just read you this, this little paragraph. A society item in the Fort Smith Times Democrat of yesterday reads as follows. A quiet wedding took place in Fayetteville Sunday in which the groom was an Austrian count. It was a case of love at first sight. The contracting parties were Arthur Erbach and Mrs. Sterling Price Harris. <laughs> Another new name, right? They have returned to this city and are living on South 19th Street 
And the bride is best known here and all over the Indian Territory as Pearl Star. More fame, more names. That's what I say. Her new husband and son died of malaria within a year's time. So that was pretty sad. There goes the count. Well, 1902, she was living with a new partner. His name was Del Andrews. And she wasn't married to him. And she had another daughter, Jeanette, in November. Now, she was implicated over and over in all kinds of misdeeds and crimes. But in 1911, she got caught in a burglary, burglary at a general merchandise store in Fort Smith. And they found a whole bunch of stolen stuff at her home. And she was found guilty and sentenced to a year in the Arkansas State Pen. She posted $2,000 bail, and her attorneys appealed the case, went to the Supreme Court, and it worked. They overturned the verdict. What do you know? Now, I gotta give a big shout out here to one of our viewers. Her name, you've seen her before, is Cheryl Daggs. Come up with some great stories for us, especially Arkansas. She did a lot of help and research on some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about right now. Thanks, Cheryl. Shout out. Uh, we kind of really kind of dug deep on this one, got into some of the newspaper articles while she, oh, look at that mausoleum. Let's go check that out. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about her, her little escapades that made the paper. And she was a lively cookie, let me tell you. She was, in the, she was in the papers constantly going to court for this or that, mostly the liquor law license stuff. And a lot of the stuff went to jury trials. I mean, some of these articles are a real hoot. In one of the articles, it said, Pearl Andrews, better known as Pearl Star, brought suit for divorce against Del Andrews, charges him with non-support and cruelty. What do you think was the cruel one? <laughs> the couple have been enjoying a rough house for many weeks. Don't you love that? A rough house. I <laughs> picture stuff being thrown around. A rough house. Dell has been arrested a number of times, but Pearl has always paid him out. <laughs> In 1916, though, they all, they finally had enough of her and the city of Fort Smith, well, they had, they had just made prostitution illegal and they put up the ordinance and of course she got arrested and they were really gonna throw the book at her, but they said, you know what? If you get out of here, we'll just drop the charges, just like get out of here. So she came here, this is how she ended up here. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty proud of my timing because here is here. No kidding, no scripting. We are at her grave. I, I just love taking you guys along with me, doing this all live, unscripted. This is, this is really, this is really fun and amazing. To really, I feel like we're just going back in time, in history, to be standing here. And look at this, these are like individual plots for each person surrounded in concrete. So this is, this is Pearl right here. Let's take a look at her stone. Looks like something's been digging here. Mother Rose Pearl Reed, 1868 to 1925. Well, she lived to be 56. And like I said, she came here in 1921. She was 53 years old. So she was here about four years. She died on July 6, 1925. 
and what a legacy she has. Not just her mother and just being part of the Old West, but the whole, you know, Bell Star, but just she created her own legacy, her own her own story. She was she lived a full life. No apologies, right? So rest in peace, Rose Pearl Reed, Pearl Star.